Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Butter What Show. This is my lovely co-host, Brian Moses, and I'm Pat Regan. And we're going to talk to you about something called ES Presence. It's a presence detection system that runs on tiny little inexpensive microcontrollers. And the reason we're going to talk to you about it today is because our friend Uncle Brian over here, he just set this up like about a week ago, and he's been adding all kinds of automation to his home assistant setup based around ES Presence. So hopefully he'll explain to us how he got this uh, up and running. Yeah, um, well, it, it all started with me wanting to automate my ceiling fan and make it feel nicer in my room, when it, my, in my office, when it gets too hot. Um, but the problem with that, I realized really quickly, is fans just make it feel cooler. The, the room isn't actually getting colder. And that I didn't want to be running the fan when I wasn't in the room. But I didn't have a good way. I didn't have a good way of detecting when I was in my room. You know, I I have a couple. I have a little bit of telemetry coming from my PC. But during the day, I'm you know I'm over there sitting at my work at my work laptop, and I'm working over there. So I I started digging around looking for. I want to say an easy way to do presence detection in a room, and uh, a follower of mine on Twitter pointed me in the direction of ES Presence, which uses, it's a low power Bluetooth base station and it queries devices around it. And you set up in a home assistant, the devices that you want to track. And I've incorporated that into, you know, not, not just that ceiling fan automation, but a few other bits of automation to how does ES Presence know where you are? I mean, I understand you carry, you are a Bluetooth tag tubby. Yes, I have my, uh, I'm a type one diabetic and I have an insulin pump, which uses Bluetooth to communicate to my phone. And then I also have my And ES presence can see that. I think it can. I got a little, I don't want to say scared. You know, it's a, it's a piece of durable medical equipment that my life depends on. I didn't, I didn't want to mess with, yeah. I didn't want to mess with it, but I wear my watch, you know, it, at first, I thought, well, my phone, that'd be easy because it's got Bluetooth and I carry it almost all the time. But I leave my... But not all Not the always. Time. And I knew... I leave mine behind a lot when I start wandering yep, around. I'll leave it on. I'll leave it downstairs when I eat breakfast. I'll come up here. I'll leave, I mean, my phone is usually with me, but not with me so frequently that I'd want to write automation that depended on it. But I, but I quickly realized that either my insulin pump or my watch I've got on pretty much all the time. Um, so that's what it's tracking my watch right now. So it's tracking it, but how on earth does it know which room so these devices are in with the radio? I've got one of these devices in, well, in my office, but then in four other rooms in the house. And then each one of these has a little teeny tiny web server running on it. And you configure in there the the name of I guess the name of the room that it goes in it, that aligns with the names of the rooms in Home Assistant. And then there's a a couple parameters that you can tweak based off of. I can't remember the name of the parameter, but it it's basically the maximum amount of distance that it's willing to report that device at. So for my office. I've got it set to, it says meters. I, there's a second parameter that goes in there that kind of associates distance with the RSSI. It basically says, hey, for X amount of RSSI equals this many meters, and over this number of meters, you can consider this device or any device that it picks up outside of the room. And I imagine it doesn't ever let you be in two rooms at once. It does not. Yeah. So if one gets stronger, it probably says, "Oh, now you're in here, not in." Yeah. If it, yeah. If it, if it. In fact, you can look, and it uses a MQTT, so you can you can log into your MQTT server and look at all the all of the different devices settings, and see where it where all it sees that particular device. But what it should do is yeah. say, "Hey, of all of those rooms, which one is?" Which one is this device closest to? And it says, yep, he's in he's in that room. Where do we get those little devices? These these come off 
these are anywhere. This is just an ESP32. I can't remember what D1 Mini. I got that's one of the little Wemo yeah, boards, probably. And I got it off a of, I got it off of Amazon in in a five pack. Yeah, I wound up. I bought I bought those. I bought a little five pack of USB power adapters and five short micro USB cables. But all together, it wound up costing about twelve dollars a room to add presence detection. How many rooms have you uh, presence detected so Five. far? Five. My office, my bedroom, the dining room downstairs, and then the kitchen and the den, TV room. Okay. And the the kitchen. That's pretty the good. Ki- it's not. It's kind of a great room. The kit. There's no real division between the kitchen and the and the den. So. It was kind of fun to sit there with my laptop and my watch and, and walk around and see, you know, when it flipped over to the other room and, and tweak the two base stations so that it was kind of accurate. And you'd probably have to tweak that per client device. Per device, right? Well, it wouldn't be. Because I doubt you'd be able to say all five, this is where the, because everybody's device is going to be a little. It's going to be different. Chattier. Yeah, a little chattier. And, you know, when my. When my back is facing away from one, you know, the Bluetooth is going through my whole body. But if I just spin 180 degrees, it it jumps up. So, yeah, it's a, I want to say imprecise. It takes just a little bit of, of fiddling. And you have to understand that, you know, there's a little bit of, once you get to the border, you can connect to, a, you know, you might start running into problems. At least a lot of your automation is going to work for both of those rooms at the same time, right? Yeah, you're, yeah it, you're probably not going to turn the light off in the living room when you're in the kitchen, yeah. when you can see the living room, right? It's not... Uh, yeah, the the biggest problem I've had is, like, it just saying I'm I'm not home for some reason. Like, I had one of them locked up or, or something weird. I had to unplug it and plug it back in. But it's, yeah, it's not like I'm up in my office and it all of a sudden says, oh, no, he's he's downstairs in the kitchen. This sounds pretty good. And what what is this called? Es presence with an s. With an s. At yeah. The, near the end. P r e n. Yeah. The c is an s. The c. Yeah. And we assume we're pronouncing it. Yeah. Right. We could be pronouncing it wrong. If we're doing that, let us know in the comments. Please let us know in the comments. And all you fine folks at home in YouTube land, are you guys uh, home automating things? Are you guys going to give es presence a try? Are you? I or are you already using it? Or are you doing something else? I. There's a there's a lot of interesting presence detect, detection projects or different ways people yeah. are trying are to Are you as creeped out by having cameras all over the house recording and watching where which rooms you're in? I'm creeped out I'm by I'm a that. little spooked. Let us know in the comments about this stuff. For sure. Because we wanna we wanna know if you're creeped out too. Did we leave anything out of that episode topic? I don't think we did. We didn't talk about my blog, but that's well it'll yeah. be length. We'll link it. I'm, I'm not worried about it. It'll be at the bottom yeah, right where here. it says Brian McMcMcMoses. It'll be there. <laughs>